Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you're, everyone's doing well and that you guys are enjoying um, the conference so far, inshallah. And hopefully um, have some great uh, couple two days running ahead that will be lovely and inspiring to some of you. Um, so um, I think um, I was asked to give a, um, a, a, tr a little bit of a workshop around uh, patience. And I think what better, and I couldn't kind of, I was kind of contemplating on what to do it on and specifically in what, in relation to what would be best as students and specifically with the current situation of what's happened to all of us. Um, and I felt um, that there's nothing more better to do than to um, discuss the concept of patience, but from a very different point of view. And that is the concept of uh, patience uh, from behind bars. And um, I think just to kind of start off, I'm, I'm very honored to be here for, as part of uh, the FEMISO and Fatma Halawa, who is part of the FEMISO uh, training department. And yeah. Let's kick things off. So it's just going to be a bit, um, I'm going to ask you guys to do something. And if you all can do it, it'd be really appreciative. Um, so I want you all guys to kind of like just um, close your eyes for a second and um, just listen to kind of like my voice, and what I'm asking of you guys, if that's possible. Okay, um, so once you do uh, kind of like close your eyes, um, I just want you to reflect on a moment where um, things were so tough for you and it felt very, very overwhelming. Um, that you guys, uh, or that you didn't know what to do, where you were at, um, the, a moment where you felt at your lowest. And, um, and it almost felt like you were paralyzed and you couldn't really move. And I think for all of us, I'm pretty sure deep down through our lives, we've experienced some moment that we felt that way. And just around, along the way of this, um, along the way of this kind of like workshop, I want you guys to keep that moment um, kind of like in the back there with you guys, because I think it will be really important on how we reflect and how we talk about what's currently, um, on how we discuss what's currently, uh, what we'll be doing in the next couple of like uh, minutes, inshallah. Um, so with that, if you guys can all please uh, come back uh, to this and open your eyes once again. And, um, I think the one thing I wanted to kind of like notice, um, and, um, and, um, through this experience that you guys have all endured or have been through or kind of like understood, um, is the element of, uh, the concept of patience and faith, right? And, um, how many times have we, uh, been, how many times have any of you guys have been uh, told or informed that in order to be patient, you had to have, uh, you had to believe in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed upon you, right? And in being patient and in having, and having uh, faith in Allah, in being, sorry, in being patient, you have to have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. Um, can I just ask, maybe if you guys can raise hands and hopefully, um, or comment, how many times have you guys, had to hear that through and through specifically when you deal with some some very difficult uh, moments for you okay i think because i can't see oh um okay um Okay, and as you as you felt that, maybe if you guys can write in the chat uh, for a little moment, I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen for a bit because I need to fix something. Um, how did it feel for you guys? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Is it just me? But is are things coming through? Uh, someone has said what? Uh, sorry, what? I, it cut off for me. Hello? Uh, yes, someone has said that every time. Oh, okay. Um, for some strange reasons, I'm not seeing the answers, so that may be a bit difficult. Um, uh, but hopefully, inshallah, not to worry. Um, yeah, so every time, um, and I think it's kind of like felt a little bit, I think as someone who's, um, who's been through that my, uh, myself and had to kind of like experience that in, uh, as well, it's not an easy concept and it's not an easy task 
um, to go through or feel like, okay, so in order for me to be patient or in order for me to have or to have faith or to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree, I must accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon me. And in that, in bestowing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in accepting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon me, then in essence, I cannot, um, uh, I cannot express emotions or feel emotions or like in, in an element it almost feels like it's a concept of being able to to just neglect all these emotions or put them aside and I think that's something that we have to kind of like begin to challenge and actually begin to debunk and the reason why and I think each other through the through this discussion is um, we'll go through, we'll run through why that is the case and how exactly actually from examples of our prophets I'm sorry from examples of the, uh, the prophet but also of some of the prophets um, how this is actually coming through and how um, the concept in of itself is not entirely right. Okay. Um, so sometimes I think the feeling, uh, what does it feel like when we feel like, you know, that we've been overwhelmed with a lot of grief or a lot of difficulties or um, uh, a lot of, uh, I don't know, a lot of hardship. How does that feeling sit with you like a lot of the times i think what we do is try and think of the feeling here but forget is what we're feeling internally inside of us um if some of you could kind of like write in the chat um yes. can you read that box or would you like me to read out for you um can you actually read it out for me because i'm i can't actually it's not coming through i'm not sure entirely sure why fine, fine. that's fine um so when the questions start coming i think some people can't see your screen right now can they not see my screen right now can, if, can the attendees, if you can see a screen, if you just say yes for me, inshallah, so we can probably yes. Okay, so we, we're, we're okay. okay. So, amazing. <laughs> I think it would be perfect is if you could re ask the question and then they'll ask and I'll be, uh, I'll be there too, inshallah. Okay, great. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Um, thank you for that. Uh, sorry, guys, about that. We promised we had like our technical stuff all prepared yesterday, but I think it's just probably done my end. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think the question that I kind of had asked is what is the emotion or what is the thing that you guys ultimately feel like um, when things like, you know, when a trial hits you or when tribulations hit you, uh, what does it feel for you? And what is that? What is that thing that kicks internally for you guys? So if the attendees could feel free to use the chat box of question and answer, I really hope it. So someone has said they feel a bit hopeless, hopeless. Okay. Um, and I think, uh, mm -hmm. okay, amazing stuff. Um, and I'm not saying it's amazing to feel that way. I think it's very, it's understandable that we do feel that way. So we feel hopeless, overwhelmed, uh, unaware. I think for me at times I felt very paralyzed and feeling like I'm very stuck uh, when things hit and they hit a very hard road for me along the way. Um, as someone who was, so I'm just gonna give probably just a brief kind of like of why I'm asking these questions and why particularly these are coming up for me is along the way um, during my life after I just graduated, um, I found myself with my three siblings um, in prisons in a cell behind four walls, um, unaware of what was happening or what currently was coming up for me was something that I was like, I was quite very confused of like the emotions that arose for me or the feelings that were coming up for me. Um, so my sisters and I, we, we were in prison for three months. And then after coming out, uh, my brother um, remained uh, imprisoned for almost four, for over four years uh, and a half. And that took a lot of toll and it took a lot of um, emotions to deal with and a lot of kind of like breakdown and um, yeah, and a lot of the times what came through or what are the emotions that felt was like very helpless, very hopeless um, and at times very, very uh, weak. And for so long, the, the concept of like what we had to do is like, okay, and so many people would uh, tell me, it's like, you need to have hope, you need to have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's so beautiful and we do and ultimately as Muslims, that's our end goal and our end aim is to have that but I think one of the things that we get caught up with or kind of like misunderstand along the way is having hope and having faith having patience are are it can coincide with one another right uh, sorry, having having grief or pain or feeling very overwhelmed or feeling very um, unaware of where you're at can also go coinc can co coincide with uh, with the concept of patience. Um, so with that, I just wanted to touch base on a very um, important story that I think many of us can go can go by very unnoticed, and that's the story of Sayyidina Yaqub. Um, and the story of Sayyidina Yaqub is, as we're all aware, and a lot of the times it's kind of like shed focus on the story of Sayyidina Yusuf. So Sayyidina Yaqub is the father of Sayyidina Yusuf. 
and obviously the beautiful story that it's in the Quran. Um, but one of the things that we ultimately forget is the struggle and the pain that Sayyidina Yaqub went through, right? At a very young age, his son got, uh, his son got um, according to his, to his kids, were, uh, had died. Um, not only that, but he was deceived by his own children. As one of his most beloved sons, who had also, he'd lost his wife. Um, and then his son was also a yatim, so like he had no mother at that time, um, had lost all of that. And the story of Sayyidina Yaqub is so powerful and so beautiful from the fact that we sometimes tend to forget what Sayyidina Yaqub went through, right? But also the element of how some people say, almost went up to 40 years that Sayyidina Yaqub and Sayyidina Yusuf were separated from. But how Sayyidina, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran describes to us the story of Sayyidina Yaqub and the story of Sayyidina Yusuf through Sayyidina Yaqub and the, the struggles that he endured and the, the, how difficult it was for him and what he went through. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentions this, uh, this to us, even though, for example, Allah could have easily put, portrayed this story in a different manner or he could have um, allowed us um, to understand the story through a different means. And one of the things is sometimes we forget to understand is the depth of the pain that Sayyidina Yaqub went, th went through, right? He had endured a lot, suffered a lot. Um, and not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he mentions very specific ayat that are very, very beautiful. And I think um, I just want us to ponder upon them and kind of like shine light on them from a different element before, inshallah, we kind of run through um, at some of the other things. Um, so the first thing that what does what do what does what do his kids do, right? ala kadib, right? So his kids actually brought brought a false shirt to him with blood, right? And Sayyidina Yaqub said, Kala Belsa walat lakum amfusukum amram fa sabarun jameen. Okay. Sayyidina Yaqub said rather your souls have enticed you to something so um to something, right? So he understands that Allah that this is something that he's just been deceived. And the element of deception is very, very big to many of us, right? So, so I I've been deceived so many times and it just hits home and it's really one of those like really frustrating and really things that people almost like think that oh you're you're very pathetic or you're very stupid to not understand what they're trying to put ahead of you and especially when it comes from the most closest people to you and for Sayyidina Yaqub it was his sons could you imagine that 11, 10 of, 11 of his sons or 10 in that specific scenario were trying to deceive him to tell him actually you've just lost the son and it wasn't it wasn't entirely our fault but rather it was your son's fault and what does Sayyidina Yaqub say he says and the, the concept of beautiful patience is sometimes overlooked. We don't understand. Why does Sayyidina Yaqub actually ask beautiful patience? Why does he? Because there's some patience, right? But he specifically asks for beautiful patience. Um, and then he says, he puts his affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And beautiful patience is actually enduring what is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings our way and how do we deal with it, but on a higher and a, and a more supreme level. And the other things, uh, uh, what did Sayyidina Yaqub do after this? And he turned away from them and said, Oh, my sorrow over Joseph. And his eyes became white from grief, for he was of that a, sur uh, a suppressor. So the thing here is, right, if Sayyidina Yaqub couldn't, if Sayyidina Yaqub was not patient enough or he didn't accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree, decree, surely he could have easily um, just accepted them and been like, Okay, I'm patient. I'm hopeful uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me this. He wouldn't have to endure the, um, uh, the pain of it all, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes to us that Sayyidina Yaqub actually, his eye, so he became blind because of the sorrow and the sadness that he endured, right? And in saying that Sayyidina Yaqub was not patient means that we have to say that Sayyidina Yaqub uh, didn't accept Allah's decree, astaghfirullah. Um, but I think it's very, very important factor that we have to kind of like come to come to terms with and accept actually in being patient, we as humans can actually express the emotions that come with us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us all these different types of emotions. He allowed us to express deep sorrow, pain. Um, he could have easily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have easily taken it away from us in a, in a, in a snippet. Um, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this. And there's so many stories in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentions around grief and sorrow and pain and how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi still expressed that. And what, what the, follows then in a couple of ayat after, uh, they said, by Allah, you will not cease, you will not see, uh, cease remembering Joseph until you become fatally ill or you become of those who perish, right? And another thing, another point that we tend to forget here is 
um, the concept of like when we deal with pain or when we do a sorrow or, you know, when hardship kicks on our way and we feel that, um, that sense of like, you know, uh, paralyzed or un unable to kind of stand up and pick ourselves up again. Um, there's a factor that people always tend to tell us. So what, what is the thing? It's like, you just need to snap out of it. Uh, surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you this so you need to accept it. And there's a wrong concept about that. And there's a wrong mindset that we as especially as inshallah, the next generation coming in is how do we shift our mindset around that? And how do we look at different ways of actually, that isn't true. Because if we are meant to snap out of things or just accept Accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree, surely Sayyidina Yaqub shouldn't have still continued to remember Sayyidina Yusuf for 40 years. He still continued to remember his son for 40 years and still to the extent again, like we said, how his eyes um, were tearing, uh, like he went blind uh, from this. Uh, uh, Oh, and then also the concept of how that when Sayyidina Yusuf, uh, when, when his sons um, returned with their shirts, that Sayyidina Yaqub still almost felt the, the, the smell of Sayyidina Yusuf, um, that his sons almost said to him, uh, sorry, the people almost said around, again, the concept of like, um, surely you've just gone old, like, come on, get over it. It's the element of like, we continue to do that to ourselves and to the people around us. It's like when we deal with grief, when we deal with any hardship, when we deal with difficulties, is how do we get over the pain and how do we get over, to, we have to snap out of it. And the reality is, uh, again, the people said here, they said, by Allah, indeed, you are in your uh, old errors. Again, after 40 years, they're saying this to him. And 40 years, Sayyidina Yaqub is still remembering his son. So um, one of the things I wanted to kind of ask is, how do we overcome pain? Right, that's a question that many of us continue to, it's like the, what, uh, the million question, like, you know, the answer, if you have a, you have a million box to be able to answer this, um, how do we overcome pain? Or grief or I'll sorrow? Give or it's a difficult one to answer. It's a difficult one to answer. Um, I want yeah. to talk about it. Okay, very good. Uh, and as uh, Sister Sana said, we must first address and not dismiss the issue, acknowledge our pain, feel it and not dismiss it. Okay, that's actually very, very good points. Yep. Um, I, well. Yeah, um, I, so the thing is, the reality is we don't overcome pain. We can't overcome pain because pain is part of our reality. It's part of the, the emotions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. It's part of life. If life did not exist, if we didn't have, um, you know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give us trials and tribulations along the way, we wouldn't be able to appreciate the concept of Jannah. And how do we look on, okay, there is that end goal, that end, you know, salam bi bisalam. there's eternal peace in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, enter it with, with peace. There will be eternal peace. So there's a factor that we just need to change our mindset or shift our mindset to how do we actually, instead of saying, how do we overcome pain? We don't need to overcome pain. Pain is part of actually us. Um, it's part of human existence. It's part of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us and these emotions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, implemented and allowed us to go through it. And the thing is, if we simply understand that we can't, rather instead of just saying, how do we overcome that? How do we look at pain and actually look at it as a, as a form of growth and as a form of development for us? And the journey that um, we endure through it is what's more important. So the thing is, like I said, we cannot overcome pain. We just have to ride the wave and accept, Allah, and accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. But upon accepting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us, it does not mean that we, we cannot express the pain that comes to it or the difficulty that we deal with it or the hardship that comes through it. And I think that's very, very important, specifically in the age or the, the time that we live. Things are going to get tough. Things are ultimately going to be difficult. There's going to be times where we find it really difficult to step out of bed and to actually be okay with that and to acknowledge that the fact is, yes, I'm on this journey and it's going to be tough and it's going to be painful. At some point in my life, I saw people die in front of me. I had a gun pointed to my head. And to just accept that at some point, I just had to forget all of that or overcome the pain or the hardship of losing people that I, I got to meet or losing um, or seeing my brother endure a lot of pain or my family endure a lot of pain is is not a reality, is not, is not the reality of life. Such is not life. Life comes and it's difficult and there's a lot of trials and tribulations along it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he, he, he gives um, 
Astaghfirullah, like, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like, so he, yabtali, so he, um, he endures difficulty to do, so like the prophets are the most people who are, who, um, who will be tested than the Anbiya, uh, the prophets, Anbiya, and the people who are like more stronger in faith. So the, the stronger we are in faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ultimately test us because through our journey of like, uh, through the journey of pain and difficulty, it can actually be a means of us of becoming closer to Allah, right? And so many times we can be like, that's, you can tell me, Fatima, that's not true, come on, like, what is your problem, right? And I can understand that because I've been in that shoes and I can understand that days, there's days where you're like, yeah, Allah, like, this is so difficult. I can't, I can't handle this. But I think there's something there that we have to continuously remember is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden a soul with what it can't handle. And at times we find that very difficult to accept. And it's fine during the trial and during the difficulty of the pain that we are enduring to feel that, to feel that, okay, yes, I'm finding it very difficult um, to overcome this. But I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this pain or has given me this trial and has given me this difficulty and I will be, I'll be able to see it. And there's light at the end of the tunnel. One of the things I kind of wanted, and I'm cautious and aware uh, of time, is um, I just wanted to ask you guys, okay, so when you guys deal with difficulties or, you know, endure pain or go through pain, what, is the th what are the things that you could potentially do to help you overcome that, right? So obviously there is the spiritual element that we all look at, but maybe also specifically like as, as, as the normal human body is, what are the humanistic things that we can do that can allow us to come out of or come through from this pain? Someone's saying, so they're saying to talk to someone, talk to Allah about it. Okay, that's, uh, that's very beautiful. Um, I, I love the concept of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one thing I think I grew on, I always say this, and I, I'm sorry like for anyone who's heard it before from me, is take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your best friend. Um, and it's a very, very difficult concept of like, okay, but how? Um, and I had to kind of like learn that through, through the journey of life. How do we take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as my best friend? Is I literally talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, you know, this, I've had a difficult day and it's very, very painful. And I'm like, Allah, I don't know what's happening, but you know, only you know. And, and I express to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exactly what is happening for me and what is occurring for me. And I think there's sometimes we feel like specifically when we go through pain or suffering or trials that, okay, we can only turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ultimately, yes, we, we do only turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but equally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought down people into our lives to be able to allow us to pursue that, to, to, to help us through that journey or to help us through that path. And one of the things, um, how can we do it, right? So this is the thing, and just for the person who said, like, talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think one of the things I probably always, always say is speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he's though your best friend. Don't have barriers between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always remember that in these difficulties, life, it's going to be difficult. It's no, it, I'm not, I'm not here to lie around and be like, yeah, guys, actually, there are some, it's going to be a beautiful journey. Um, it isn't. It's a hard, difficult journey when you endure pain and suffering. But I think the beautiful journey comes through by the end of it when you, when you sit through it and you appreciate every element. SubhanAllah, like some of the times like when I contemplate and be like, okay, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me such a hardship? Or understanding what is it as a Fatima that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to teach me? I begin to understand every element, SubhanAllah, through the four years or the five years, things that have come through that I wasn't aware of, or how as an individual I grew and developed and became, um, became the person I am today. And that, that, that can be a very hard concept to kind of um, put our heads around at times. Um, I think one of the main things is understand it's a long path. And it's okay, um, there's light at the end of the tunnel, uh, like they say. And I think along the times, it's very, very difficult to accept that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And as someone who's been there um, and who's experienced that or who understands that, it's very difficult at times to see that there is light at the, at the end of the tunnel. I promise you that there is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us that there will be. Um, but be patient. Be patient with yourself. Be kind with yourself. Um, but ultimately, also understand that in the long path that, that you're on, there's so much growth and there's so much strength uh, to you as an individual that you, do, that you go through. 
one of the things also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like that I was, I was trying to mention previously is regarding the element of um that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also bestowed people in our lives that we can we can turn to, we can seek help from. Um one of the things I did and I it really, really helped me along the way was actually so I have different people for different things. And I I, I know that sounds a bit can sometimes sound a bit weird to people to hear. But let's say for example, if I need um some personal advice, there's an individual that I go for and someone I really trust. If there is an advice that I need um, regarding, I don't know, my professional element, there's in another individuals, um, there's an auntie, let's say, for example, that I go to when I need um, specific advice in relation to specific matters in my life. And I have different people that I know, okay, these are the people I can trust. These are the people that I can go and share that pain or that tr tr trouble with and actually allow it to come out for me. Because sometimes when the pain is so overwhelming internally, it becomes really, really difficult. And as someone who's been imprisoned before and i know this is this may be like a very uh, weird concept to understand but um sometimes being locked up is not as bad as actually being out in the world um and that can be very it can be a very difficult um thing to understand right because ultimately freedom is every is something that we're all looking for and the ultimate of being able to express who we are or express how we want like the concept or the notion of me being able to stand up and want to get out uh, out of my room um just now was something that was forbidden for me i couldn't even i couldn't even comprehend that at some point we couldn't comprehend that or couldn't deal with that but i think there's something beautiful that sometimes i became aware of as i went out and as i found it very difficult to get back into the normal life specifically as my brother was behind bars and there's that guilt or you know that builds up into you and being like you know seeing people fall onto the ground or you know feeling like there's something that there's more that the life is just is a mess okay um in that in that way and i think there's still something about that that sometimes understanding that actually we can we can sometimes imprison our minds than actually imprisoning our bodies. And it's something that I've actually been through as someone who's been imprisoned through my body. I also understood the concept that I had to imprison, that at some point I imprisoned my body as my mind as well. And it's that concept is how do we bring ourselves out of that imprisonment and how do we pull ourselves out is understanding that it's not, it's not an easy road, but it's okay because along the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. And along the way, there are different methods that you can take. Um, one of the other things um, that I had to kind of like understand is understand you. And that was something that was really kind of like, is really difficult, right? To, because what works for Fatima may not work for you. What works for, let's say, for example, my brother or my sister may not work for you. And it's okay. And nothing fits. It's not a one fit all uh, solution. It's something that you need to understand. Actually, as Fatima, today has been really difficult for me. What works best for me as someone who has... Um, I used to hate journaling, um, actually, and never really liked it. And for some reason, in the back of my mind, I always presumed that, oh God, I'm cautious of time. Um, I always presumed that um, in, in kind of like writing or kind of like journaling, there'd be something about, oh, someone seeing um, my notes or kind of like looking through my, through my thoughts. And I, I, I think that put me off journaling for so long. And essentially what I ended up doing or like kind of like forcing myself to just sit and kind of having a conversation with myself and sit with myself and say, okay, why is it that I find it very uncomfortable to journal or write or kind of like express what it is that I'm going through? And I realized as Fatima, what I found very, very difficult for me was in journaling, I had to accept what I was dealing with. Um, because I had to put it, I had to kind of like write it down and um, put it through and reread it and that made it more real. So instead of it being more real in my head, just real in my head, it had to, it came out and it was more real. And there was something about that that ticked me off or put me off um, initially at the start. And I think with that, um, I understood that actually it wasn't through journaling. I was able to understand myself a lot more, accept myself, uh, accept the difficulty that was coming through. Even when days I couldn't journal, like there were some days where I'd sit in front of a laptop or kind of like write a paper and pen and I didn't know what to write. I'd just be right. I'd start writing. I don't know what I'm feeling and expressing that and being able to express that and just write that. There's some days where I still can't write. So what I do is I actually turn on like my, um, my voice recorder and start recording myself and actually speaking to myself um, because that's a form of understanding who you are and there's no shame or nothing because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's built you and he's created you and it's your responsibility to understand you your responsibility if you need help to seek help right and there's nothing wrong with saying actually as an individual I'm tuning through this difficulty or this time of error or you know this tri uh, tribulation so I need help and go and seeing seeking that 
that profession because like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says was'alu ahl dhikr and ask the people of knowledge and asking the people of knowledge can sometimes seeing a professional at some point in my life I had to go and see a professional and um, there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong in feeling ashamed about it and yes there is this whole stigma that people and at times when I was first doing it I really understood that factor um, but I think coming again to terms with being like actually this is me and this is what I need in order for me to find that light at the end of the tunnel. That's what I need to go through. And that's what you do for you. Then you should do that. Um, the other thing, sorry, I'm just gonna, um, like I said, find methods that best work for you, whether it's you deciding to go out for a walk or whether it's through different means like seeking professional help, um, whatever it is that works for you, find it, write it down, acknowledge it, realize it, have discussions, have internal discussions within yourself and really ask yourself the difficult questions. Why is this difficult? Why is this period difficult for me? What's happening for me? What are the emotions that are arising and really feel them? Because a lot of the times we try to feel them. And this is one thing that a lot of people always used to tell me. You're just trying to make sense of everything and you're not allowing your emotions or your feelings to come through. And it wasn't until that I actually expressed or dealt with those emotions and actually allowed them to come out that the path or the journey became a lot more easier. And um, like I said, journaling is something that's really, really, really helpful. It allows us to grow and develop it through and really understand ourselves. Um, one of the things is reflect on stories of the Quran. Um, and sometimes it's really difficult, like, you know, when you're really hard, when you're really low or feeling really, uh, you know, in this blocked wall, um, what can you do? And sometimes it's really difficult to even try connecting with the Quran. But it's not about connecting with the Quran, but it's more about understanding and reflecting on the stories that are mentioned in the Quran. There's so many stories, like the story of Sayyidina Yaqub, the story of Sayyid, Sayyidina Maryam, when she says, when she specifically says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it to us in the Quran. And she says, oh, I wish I had died pr prior to seeing this day. And I'm just par like rephrasing it. Um, so if you look at the stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and even in the seerah of the Prophet sallam, the concept of like a whole year that was named Am al Huzn, the year, the year of sadness after the Prophet sallam, in, uh, experienced the pain of the loss of his wife and then also the pain of the loss of his uncle. Why, did, why was a whole entire year named with that? And upon reflecting and understanding, wow, that these pro the prophets and the Sahaba had endured all this difficulty and all this pain, you begin to understand that, okay, I need, it, it's a path that I'm going to be on and it's okay for that path and there'll be light at the end of the tunnel. And with that, I just wanted to say Jazakumullah khair uh, and apologies for any of uh, the technical issues that was on my end and for anything good that was said that was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything bad that was from me. Jazakumullah khair and sister There was nothing from your side wrong. Apologies for that. Um, just before, I wanted to briefly introduce you quickly. I'm um, sorry, I forgot to do it before. Sister Fatima is a filmmaker by profession, youth facilitator by passion and activist by choice. She's the head of training for Femi Soul, board member of Uplift, and one of the leading head of the Free Halawa campaign, which took over four years to advocate and lobby for her brother, a human rights activist who was unjustly in prison in Egypt. Now, from us, forces, we would like to thank you dearly for taking out your time and giving us this beautiful workshop. May Allah reward you immensely and elevate your ranks in Jannah. In Jannah. Mm -hmm. And uh, may Allah grant you peace, peace, inshallah. I mean, Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. Salam.